brought to you by Jays. Hey everybody, Luke here in the Jegster shop today. We're going to be installing this Bandit fuel injection unit on my second gen Camaro here. Uh, the first step is going to be to take your old carburetor off and get the carb flange on the top of the intake manifold all cleaned up and ready to go. As you can see, we just put a fresh intake on this car, so it's going to be a really easy install for us. And we're starting at the point of your carburetor is all off and we're going to go step one to putting the bandit fuel injection on. The first step here is, is now that we've got our old carburetor out of the way, we've got a clean flange on the top of our intake. We're going to put on some studs and get the base plate gasket on before we drop the throttle body on. Now before you put the nuts and the washers on the driver's side, you're going to want to put your throttle bracket on there. Now you're going to tighten down all four of the corner bolts to 10 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern. So now we've got the throttle body bolted on here and we've got our throttle bracket on. The next step is going to be to put our coolant temp sensor into the intake manifold. Uh, depending on the intake, you might need to use an adapter or reducer bushing. Um, this one we do need the adapter, so I'm going to thread it into the intake. Then I'm going to thread the sensor into the adapter. Uh, the sensor already has some thread sealing on it, as you can see in the red there. Uh, this one doesn't, so I'm going to put a little uh, thread paste on there when I put it into the intake manifold. So now I've got the coolant temp sensor installed down here in the intake manifold, so the next step is going to be to grab the connector for the coolant temp sensor. It's got a label that says CTS on it, coolant temp sensor. And then we're going to go ahead and plug it into the intake manifold right here where we just installed the sensor at. So we've got the coolant temp installed, the throttle bodies on and bolted down. Now we need to deal with the other end of the wiring harness. So the next step is going to be determine where you're going to route this at and where you're going to mount your ECU. We've got the wiring harness all routed um, down here towards the battery from the engine. One thing I wanted to note is obviously make sure you keep the harness away from anything hot, any moving parts, your fan, your belt. Uh, you know, just use common sense when you're, when you're mounting it. We also found a good spot to put the ECU down on the ender fender here. Uh, another important note when you're mounting this, make sure you use some sort of a anti-vibration mount, rubber mount, something like that, uh, because we all know that vibration is the death of electronics, so you know, this will help keep this thing alive for the long haul. Now that those things are addressed, the last couple of steps here is, is the little bit of wiring you have to do. So two main connections, you've got a power and a ground. These we're going to hook directly to the battery. If you need to extend them to reach, you know, depending on how you route your harness, uh, that's fine. Just we always recommend that you do a solder connection when you're extending any of the wiring. Then you've got three wires here right next to your power wire. One of them is the key on power. This one t activates the system. So you're going to wire this in to a 12 volt positive that comes on with your key. That way the car starts when you turn the key. That's pretty important. You've got a fuel pump lead here. If you're using the computer to control your fuel pump, then you're going to use this to wire into the positive side of your fuel pump. Uh, my car is wired up previously with a standalone fuel system, so I, it's not needed in my application. And then there's also a wire to control your electric fan relay. So if you're using an electric fan, you can use this to the ground side of your relay, and it'll control the fan. You can set, change the settings in a handheld controller. This car has a mechanical fan, so that's not needed. And the final wire is your TAC input wire. This one, this car has an ignition box on it and it has a TAC output. So this is pretty straightforward. I'm just hooking the two together and this is even the right length. I don't have to extend it. If you extend this wire, again, make sure you solder that connection. Hook it up to the TAC output if you have an ignition box. If you're using an HEI distributor, it's gonna have a TAC terminal on it. There's lots of different ways this can be connected. Obviously, if you have questions, reach out to our tech line and we're happy to help you with the install. All right, I've got my tack lead here and I'm going to go ahead and attach it to my, the output on my ignition box here. These are both spade connectors, so it's just a quick push connect. Here we go. 
Now that we've got all the harness routed and the ECUs mounted and everything, I'm just hooking up my power and the ground to the battery now. So we're to a step here where you need to put the oxygen sensor in. And there's a few ways that you can do that. The kit comes with a mounting provision. This can either be clamped on using these band clamps or you can weld this plate to your header collector. Now, if you're not comfortable with welding and you don't wanna clamp it on, JEGS also has some collector reducers that already have an O2 bung welded into them. The main thing that I wanted to touch on here is you wanna make sure that when you weld your bung in or you clamp your bung on or you place your bung, it is not straight up and down. It actually needs to be at about a 10 to a 15 degree angle. So it's actually gonna be offset to the side like this a little bit if you're in the car. The sensor goes in and what that does is it allows any moisture that ends up on the end of the sensor to run off and get out of there. That way it doesn't contaminate your sensor. Yep. All right, we got the O2 sensor screwed into the collector down there and then I just got finished plugging in the connector to the O2 sensor. So I've got my new fuel line here. This is gonna connect from my fuel pressure regulator over to the back of the throttle body unit. Uh, the inlet is on the driver's rear, so I've got a 90 degree fitting on one side, I'll attach here. Then I've kind of made this into an S shape. So we'll go ahead and get this thing installed. Now I'm mounting the handheld controller inside and the first thing I gotta do is run the wire. Now this is the wire that connects to the handheld. One end has got a USB connection the end that goes to the wiring harness has got a metro pack and then this three and a half millimeter press in. The connections for those are right by the ECU connector. You know, they're side by side. This is the side on the harness. Just plugging these right in. And now that's connected out on the harness side. You're gonna feed your wiring harness down through the firewall to the inside or wherever you're planning on mounting your handheld unit. We've got all of our systems pretty much completely installed now. So we're checking the fuel system to make sure we don't have any leaks. And then we're going to go ahead and set the pressure on our fuel pressure regulator to a 58 PSI. So the first step with the handheld is you go to initial setup, hit OK. Now you're gonna go through a basic calibration here under engine setup, connecting to ECU. Perfect, so now we're gonna go through and we're gonna fill these in based on uh, our particular application. And this one, it is a V8 engine, so we'll leave that one as it is. Engine CID, that's for the cubic inch of your engine. This one is a 383. So we're gonna go ahead and change this to 383. Then after you change a setting, you always have to hit OK and that sends the information back to uh, the ECU. The third option is for your cam. This is going to be based on the vacuum that your engine makes. Uh, I would recommend you refer to the installation guide. There's some guidelines here. For this particular engine, we're going to go with setting number two. Now the rev limit on this, 6300, that's fine and the idle RPM warm on this particular engine at 750. I actually like this to be about 900. So I'm gonna set this to 900 for mine. Now those are the basic settings. So I turn the key off and I'll wait for 30 seconds and that's going to save these settings to the ECU. So we've got our install done, the throttle body's on, we've got coolant back in the cooling system. Everything's hooked back up. Time to turn the key and see what happens. Zach, can you help us with that? Sounds good. 